Hi guys, so today we're gonna paint this um, this old gray barn. This is an old gray barn. It is uh, really a drab photograph, but I stopped along the road one day and decided I just needed a picture of it so I could paint it. You never know how long these barns are gonna be standing, so I just feel it's kind of nice to have a record of them um, in a piece of art. So, the thing that we're going to do today is change this to a sunnier scene, a, a lot more color, a lot more contrast, light and shadow, and um, so let's get started with that. First thing I want to do is uh, start with my sky, and I've got a little bit of Daniel Smith Cobalt Blue, my paper towels that are falling. And I am just going to put in a simple sky, nothing fancy, just very simple. And I've got my number 10 Versatile Rigger number 10. And that's an Escoda brush. So I'm just going to plop in a little blue. I don't really want my sky too, too busy, so I'm just going to soften some of those areas. I want some wispy clouds, but I don't want a sky that's just too, too busy. Get a little too much going on that way. Um, so I'm just going to soften. I'm going to bring it down to my roof and fade that color out here because I'm going to add trees. Same thing over here. I want it pretty light coming down to that horizon line, but also at this time, while it's still got a sheen, I can add a little bit more blue here and there and have it soften. And that'll give me a nice sunny day. I could be moving this paper around too. Don't always don't don't feel like you're stuck with your board on the flat. You can move it around. And there, I'm bringing too much blue down there. Hang on. Okay, so that's plenty. And then I've got some green gold here that I'm just gonna put in while my paint's still wet. Got a sheen. And that was a little bit of a thicker mixture. It wasn't too diluted, so. And then I wanna soften that. I've got a little bit of Mars yellow, I think that is. I'm just going to drop a little bit in there at this time. Fade that color out. And then I want some of this over here too. Maybe a little bit less bold. That'll give it a little sense of distance. There we go. And we're gonna let this dry and then I'll come back in and start with my barn wood. Actually, I'm gonna drag that down a little bit. The sky kind of came into my barn roof, which is fine because we want a little of that sky reflecting in the tin roof. So now we're gonna let it dry uh, and come back and work on the barn wood. Okay, so the sky and the trees are nice and dry, and look how beautiful this little area is. It had a little extra moisture in there that got dropped in, and so there are some blossoms that happened, and I love that in a tree area, brushes or bushes and that kind of thing. It just gives it some texture. I really, really like the blossoms. There's so a lot of times I will do that on purpose. This time it was just a happy accident. So 
Next on the list here is starting to get the barn painted. Let's go paint the barn. Um, and I have to say right from the get-go that um, artists over the years have discovered that the shadow side is a full 40% darker than the sunlit side. So that's what we're going for. We want to give this side um, enough value. There's going to be enough contrast here to make this look like a sunny day. So let's get started mixing up some grays. And I'm going to go to a smaller brush, my number six Utrecht. And I'm going to start by getting a few... Actually, I need to get my paint a little bit wetter first. Helps if it's wet, since it's watercolor. And then I'm gonna get some of my paints mixed up here. Might have a little too much water on my palette there. So I've got, uh, let's see, ultramarine blue deep right there. And then I've got Alizarin Crimson. The Ultramarine Deep is a Holbein color. Um, it's the only uh, company or brand that I know of that makes Ultramarine Deep. You find French Ultramarine, Ultramarine Light, and just regular Ultramarine. But I do like the Ultramarine Deep because it's a little bit darker in value. So I've got the red, green, and blue, and then I want some burnt sienna hanging out, and carbazzo violet, Daniel Smith, and Daniel Smith's quinacridone burnt orange. So I'm gonna start by adding just some darker value in here, pure color. And I'm just placing them side by side. So, and also leaving a little bit of a light edge there for my roof. And the reason I'm doing it this way is so they blend together on their own. There's something magical that happens there as you drop them in next to each other or over rather than mixing it on the palette and putting it on the paper that way. This gives it some glow. That's that ultramarine, so I'm just gonna pop in a little burnt sienna. And this is my first layer. So I'm gonna come back over the top of this after it dries and add some darker but for right now i'm going for glow we're going to get a little glow as these colors dry and here while this is still wet i want to bring a little of that color down into my roof and then we're going to come right along here same idea. And add those other colors right next door to the ones previously put down. And I think I failed. Didn't fail. I just didn't add my alizarin up there, but that's okay wasn't too late my paint was still at a proper stage i still have sheen on my paper but i do want to work fairly quickly i don't want the the paint to dry out i want to come along while it's still wet and that way they fuse together. Otherwise, if you let it dry, kind of forget about it, you come back and it's you've got a hard line. Don't want that hard line. So in here, I want a little bit of a 
This is Mars Yellow that I'm putting down at the base here, and that's going to be bleeding up into my barn wood. So it's like the grass is there. Kind of bring it over there and over here. And I'm going to soften right below that. So it's not quite so such a hard edge. Okay, so that looks pretty good to me. A little bit darker up there maybe under the eave. And a little reflected light is kind of nice too. So I've got a little permanent yellow deep there. I believe that's what that is. And I'm just going to pop that in a little bit up by the green right up under the roof so it looks a little glowy okay so this is going to dry and then we'll come back and add some darker values over the top of that okay so let's let this dry and we'll come back and take another look at it okay nice and dry and i'm going to switch brushes to my holbein El Dorado 3 8 of an inch flat and the nice thing about this brush is this nice uh, flat edge and also I've got some really great little corners here that I can do some finer lines and details but I like the flat because I can come up under the um, line of the roof really easily with that and I'm going to get a couple of darker mixtures so I've already got my hookers green out here and to darken up a green, I want to add a complement. And the complement would be my alizarin, which I have right here. I don't need a ton of it because the alizarin is pretty darn strong. But just enough to darken up that. And then I'll have a little bit of my carbazel violet and my burnt orange there and i think adding a little bit of that ultramarine deep to that mixture let's get it to where i want it to be that's going to have it nice and dark and then a little more burnt sienna standing by and i'll put some oops i'll get that darkened up with my blue and ready to go okay so let's start with going over the green there and just letting some of the lighter value shine through and then i'm going to come right next door to that with my burnt sienna mixture and then how about a little bit more pure blue up in here and a little bit more of the violet right here. I'm just going by what I put down previously and darkening, darkening it up a bit. So that's how we're getting that darker value achieved. And that is a little bit of hay in that little side area. So I'm gonna put a burnt sienna mixture in there. And I like that, I like the darkness of this. And I wanna soften some of those lower edges too, so. And just using this tip edge of my brush and kind of softening that as I come down um so up in here that's pretty dark already i don't know that i want to go too much darker but maybe in a couple of spots and then bring some line down i also don't want to get this too too busy in in my barn 
So I think that's about all I'm gonna do there. Then I'm gonna come over on this side and add some shadow under my um, roof. Varying that up a little bit. And I'll touch in a little bit of green, a little bit more of that carbazole and burnt orange mixture. And then I rinsed my brush off. I'm just gonna bring some of this color down. This is my light side. And remember, we're, we're looking at the 40% rule. So I want a little bit of color, but I don't want it to be too dark. So I'm just gonna soften out some of those colors with a little bit of water and come in with a light diluted Mars yellow and let that kind of come up into my barn. And again, I'm just going to fade out with clear water. Maybe add just a little touch more. Okay, now I can darken up a little bit more under here with a fix thicker mixture of paint. This is still wet, so I don't want to have it too diluted or it's going to bleed into the side of that barn. Let's get a little darker mixture of that green with um, some ultramarine deep in there. And how about a little touch of that purple? Purple and green make a really nice dark. So... Give it a little pop. Bring some of it up into the roof. And I want that window to kind of be an extension of that shadow. Okay, so let's let this dry and then um, we'll come back up into the roof and add some of that reflected color from the sky. All right, let's work on the sky. And with the sky, I'm gonna stick with this Holbein brush and go with, um, actually, I need to clean that off a little bit. I don't want green in my roof necessarily. Okay, so I'm gonna do a little bit of that cobalt blue. And I'm gonna maybe gray, oh, I think I'll put a little tiny touch of alizarin. So I'm gonna look at where the darker areas of this roof are, and I'm just gonna add some, some streaks, kind of coming down from the area there. Some of that sky was uh, already coming into my roof, which was fine. So now I can play around a little bit with the it, uh, top edge of this brush and, and use it to create some of these lines where the tin is connecting together. So that might be just a little strong, but I do like that combination there. Maybe just dilute this a little bit and bring some of that carbazole in. I like how that looks. 
probably add just a little bit into that center area. And again, and there is some darker touches up along the top of that roof that I like to add. And a little coming over here. You know, you don't need to fill in every single line that you see. Our brains do that. It's like you know, your brain knows that it's supposed to be there. And then I want to come over here and do a little of that too. Just add some darker areas. And some of that blue is very strong in here, so. All right, so I really like where this is at, and I'm gonna add a couple of little touches of color. I've got a little, um, this is cobalt green, and I like that. It's opaque and it sits on top, so it gives me a little wood effect. Come next to that though. Got a little carried away with it. And just adding a little touch of dark line here and there. Soften that out. And maybe a little bit more of that cobalt green. I think I'll do it up here too. There's a window up here and I can use that cobalt green to Actually, I'm gonna lift out a little bit of that too, probably, so hold on. And I want a little bit of that cobalt green over here. A little diluted. Because again, we're trying to stick with that same idea. This is gonna be 40% lighter than this side. So, I don't want this side to get too dark. Okay, so really less is more in this case probably, so I'm gonna leave that as is. Darken that up a little bit. And I like that cobalt blue, actually. A little bit here and there. Kind of pulls that sky down into the side of the barn. Okay. So that's good. Now we want to um, lift out a couple little spots. Like I said, I was going to do lifting out just a little bit there where that diamond shaped window is up in the eave of the barn, I guess it would be. And then I wanna lift out just a couple of little highlights. Not too many. Just a couple here and there. Same thing up here. Okay, so I'm going to clean this little palette up here of this color. And grab another paper towel. And get, again, my Holbein brush. 
And I got that, <clears throat> excuse me, green gold, a little bit of cobalt blue to that. I'm just going to add some little scruffy little shrubs there. Look like the trees, there's some shrubbery in front of those background trees and then soften that out. Same thing over here. The barn is the star of the show though, so I don't want to get carried away with, with my bushes. I want to add just a touch of that Mars yellow, like that. And then I'm going to go with a bigger brush because I want to add some, some of that to my foreground too, but I want it to be very loose and Maybe not quite that splishy, but I want it to come up a little bit over the top of the mid-ground there. Like it's some sort of a wheat field or something. And softening that out just a smidge. And I've got that uh, burnt sienna there. Mix it with a little bit of cobalt to darken up some of the, oh, that's a little bit too blue. A little bit too dark. And just come in with some water and dilute it. And how about a little bit more of the Mars yellow there. And I think I do want that actually a little bit grayed down, more blue. It's good at drawing too much attention where I want the barn to be the focal point. So how about a little shadowy grass? See what happens when we add a little splatter to that. Might make it a little more interesting. And how about a little bit of green to bring that green down into the foreground so it doesn't seem so all alone.
And we're actually liking that coming up on the tip of my brush and just adding a few little extra marks. That's going to be too green. And this is a little too wet in here to really add too much of a <clears throat> line to because it will just uh, it will just dilute. Okay, so I like where this is at, and I'm just gonna let this dry. And I had thought maybe I would add a little bit of uh, branch over here, and we'll see if um, after this dries, how that how that feels. I'll take a step back and and analyze this, and then determine if I want to add a little tree back there or not. Okay, so after having sat back and taken a look at this and thought about it for a little bit, I decided that I'm going to go ahead and put some uh, some branches in coming off from the side. Um, it's a little bit of a bold move, and it's uh, something that takes a little bit of courage because I like where this painting is. I don't want to ruin it, and that's the first thing that pops into my head is, oh no, it might ruin it if I don't do it right, or if I don't like the way the line looks, or whatever it might be. Um, but if I don't try it, then I won't ever know, and I'll forever wonder if it would have been better with a branch in it. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And I've got, um, I've got a number four. Princeton Velvet Touch. It's a long round. It's got a nice tip on it. And I mixed up a little bit of Burnt Sienna and um, Ultramarine Blue Deep. I think I'll do some Cobalt too. Just because the values are a little bit different in those blues. So actually might want a little bit lighter value. Um, I think a little burnt orange. So I'm going to mix up a couple different colors because uh, that way it's a little bit varied. A little bit lighter, a little bit darker, a little bit grayer, a little bit browner. And let's see what happens when I add these in. Okay, here we go. We're going to be bold. We're going to be brave. Let's see what happens. So let's see. I think I'll want to come right over the top of this horizon line that'll give a a little bit of a um, depth put the foreground in the foreground so let's see what happens holding it down on the ferrule a little bit more i'm going to use my my arm rather than my hand to to uh, guide these strokes so let's just see what happens and we are getting Bold. A little bit more brown in there, I think. Let's come all the way up. And I'm going to come back in and add a little bit of green. Let's add a little branch there. Little one coming off from that. See, it's not that hard, right? <laughs> okay, so let's get some of that green gold mixed up and just come right over the top. And I'm using the side of my brush. And there's a little bit darker mixture. I can't remember what that was. I think it was Hooker's Green with a little bit of cobalt blue in it, maybe. 
little flicky marks it'll look like more leaves okay that is all I'm gonna do over there so now I want to take a look at that as far as balance goes I might just add a couple of little real light uh, branches coming up in there just a touch not too much maybe even more along the burnt orange side of that just so it looks like some maybe grass growing up a little more balance and a touch there of that green just to balance it out Okay, so I think we have got it finished. Let me add a quick signature to that and we're gonna call this one good. I feel like a, that was a good move on, on uh, putting that tree in there. So now I'm just gonna add my little signature over here. All right, hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you, uh, did please hit subscribe and I'm going to list in the description below the supplies that I used and the paint colors that I used and where you can find them so if you have ideas for future videos please let me know by leaving a um, comment below and I will work my hardest to get a video up of what you want to see demonstrated so Hope you guys have a great day. Happy painting. Get out your brushes and try this little project and we will see you in the next video. Bye.